Let's cut the bullshit, okay? Now, what do you really, really want from me? You want to smell my punani? Punani. <laughs> <laughs> my mother gotta go see that movie, man. Yeah, um, I know you ain't smell it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get? On the 23rd of July 1993, Tupac's second acted in movie, Poetic Justice, was released. I am Milky, this is old school rap, and this is the 25th anniversary video of Poetic Justice. I can't believe that Poetic Justice is now 25 years old. Like everybody, just take a second to let that sink in. That's fucking crazy. That this movie is genuinely older than me. Anyway, also before we start this video, if you've not already seen this movie somehow, you've somehow missed it or not had the opportunity to watch it, go watch this video and then come back because I'm going to be talking about what happens in the movie and I don't want to spoil it for anybody. Anyway, so written and directed by John Singleton, this movie had Tupac playing a very different character than the one that he played in Juice, with his character Lucky having a daughter and working at the post office, obviously very different from Bishop. Tupac said himself he had to really draw back and calm himself down to play this role and ended up having a bit of drama on set as most people already know regarding him being asked to take an AIDS test by like about four different people and refusing. Tupac also said in an interview that working with Janet Jackson was actually like working with the president. He said he walked away with a good experience and that he believed that he got so into the role that he genuinely fell in love with Janet and that when the movie wrapped and finished he just he felt a presence, it felt like a breakup. So the movie starts off with Janet's character Justice at the movies with her boyfriend Markel, played by Q-Tip, who we see later get shot in the back of the head by people that he ran into with a prob uh, by people that he ran into that he had a problem with beforehand. This is where we see Justice close off and start working in a hairdresser's and start writing her poetry, which obviously plays a big role in the film. Then she of course meets Tupac's character Lucky, who brings mail from the post office where he works into the hairdresser's. This is where the classic "You want to smell my punani" scene happens. Which, you know, is a pretty iconic scene from the film. Which later leads to Lucky and his friend Chicago, played by Joe Torre, who also works at the post office, going on a road trip to deliver mail, and Justice is talked into going along by Leisha, played by Regina King. But which, due to the fact that she's um, this character is dating Chicago at the time, which obviously, for the fact that they don't, uh, Janet and Tupac's characters don't like each other at this point, which leads to arguments and awkwardness from Lucky and Justice to begin with. But later, when they crash a big family barbecue by claiming they're a part of the family, Lucky and Justice start to bond, realising that they are more in common than they think. We see the characters get closer and closer and eventually kiss after Lucky has a falling out with Chicago because of a fight breaking out between him and his girlfriend where he ends up hitting both the girlfriend and Justice, with Lucky ended up leaving him at the side of the road just in the middle of nowhere. And also while on this road trip, Lucky also planned to take a trip to visit his cousin to work on some music. But when him, Justice and Leisha finally arrived there when he was to see his cousin, he finds out his cousin had sadly been shot and he'd seen his cousin basically dead in the back of the ambulance, which causes him to freak out, shout and drive away from Justice. But then the end closes off with Lucky bringing his daughter to meet Justice, he brings her into the hairdressers and then they end up getting together and Lucky obviously thoroughly apologises for how he acted. And this is how we see the movie end and obviously with them getting together. I know, obviously I missed out a lot of details in this, this is just, I was just going over the main points because I didn't want to sit here for like 10-15 minutes just to explain every single detail of the movie. Also, if somebody hasn't seen it then obviously I said, as I said before, I didn't want to give everything away and I didn't want to spoil anything. And I just wanted to give the main points out just to get people interested to quickly go and watch the movie. And personally this has always been one of my favourite two-pack movies. Obviously it wasn't the first Tupac movie that I've seen, but it's always been one of my favourite. I just like the fact that I agreed with what he said, that you could see that he really had to draw himself back, calm down to play this role, and it's not a role that we'd usually see Tupac play. But so it's always just, I thought it really showed his acting skills off really well. And I want everybody in the comments to let me know what your favourite Tupac movie is and just why. I love hearing everybody's feedback, I love hearing what everybody has to say. And also, just quickly before I finish off this video, I want to start doing shoutouts at the start of my videos. I want to, because because everybody supports and helps me so much, I want to help you and give back. So all you have to do is like this video, make sure you're subscribed, and then send me proof on my old school rap page. Just DM me it, send me a proof of a picture of you liking this video and being subscribed, and then send me what like send me a screenshot of what you would want shouted out at the start of this video. So then you could be a chance that obviously I'll pick who to shout out in the next video, and then I'll just keep doing that every week. So this has been Milky, this has been Old School Rap, and I'll see you all in the next video.